What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning. Welcome back. I'm back. I went away for the weekend. I was gone Saturday and Sunday. I went up to Orlando and did the parks actually Friday during the day. Hit the park Saturday and then went to Country Thunder Saturday night. It was an amazing time. Yesterday I got home. I legit threw my bag in my room, hit the couch, put football on, and just went in and out of naps. I was exhausted. I woke up super late today as I get ready for the start of another work week. But I am recovered, and I am back, and there is so much to go over. Check out the headlines. I got lined up for you in this video. We're going to talk about the flare delay because, yes, there is going to be another delay. But is it actually a good thing? Let's find out. SEC versus Ripple, a lot has gone on since I did my last video recording Thursday night. It seems like the gloves are off, they're ready to throw down, and folks, Ripple wants a jury trial, and that's the way it looks like it's going. It looks like we're going to a jury trial for the fair notice defense. Why is this a big deal? It's a big deal because Ripple wants to call each and every single one of those pieces of crap, especially Hinman, up up in front of that courtroom, in front of that jury, and they want to know why they declared Ethereum and Bitcoin not to be securities. And they want to know why they made such a decision, which was just going to give so much confusion within the entire space. I want a jury trial. Ripple wants a jury trial. You should be wanting a jury trial as well, but it's fair notice defense, folks, because you want Ripple's lawyers to go right after these folks and you want them to have to give you the answers that we all are looking for how about bitcoin is the bottom in we just been floating in this nineteen thousand dollar range folks how long how long has it been could this be the bottom or do we see further capitulation here time will tell but i'm gonna go over it and then john deaton <laughs> this is gonna make you laugh john deaton is uh well, people are out there saying that he is spewing Q conspiracies about Ethereum. John Dean's had enough. He's ready to go take this on. So let's do this. Let's get a live coin watch. Let's get the show on the road. Bitcoin, $19,428. It is currently up 1% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum back above 1300 coming in at $1,349. It is up 3.45%. XRP is coming in at a mean lean 45 cents and wants to be 46 cents. It is up 0.08% in the past 24 hours. Bitcoin dominance has fallen below 39% coming in at 38.93. And the total cryptocurrency market cap is at 957 billion we've been seeing a float between 936 and 963 billion dollars it wants to try to push above a trillion and hold but it is not so this leads us into is the bitcoin bottom in michael who's a very big trader and ta chartist and reader states that he does believe the bottom of bitcoin is in despite the majority believing seeing that will hit fourteen thousand or lower this is all i can say to you and obviously if i tell you one thing michael tells you another and we both are on different pages one of us is going to be right it's like flipping a coin here i don't believe the bottom is in why do i say this well since 2017 and i've said this before and i'm going to continue to say it since 2017, when I have been into these markets, whenever we have seen any asset, but we'll see Bitcoin here because that's what we're looking at. Whenever we have seen any coin or any token, and Bitcoin is the example we're looking at, stay within a range for quite some time. We always see a major breakdown. It has failed to break above 23. It has definitely failed to even get close to 29,000. What I think is going to happen is money is going to leave the markets because you, what, what always happens in these types of markets is you have money in who is looking to make a quick dollar. They are sitting in it. They are seeing that they actually aren't going anywhere. They might have even lost a couple of bucks. So they're going to think that it is the perfect time to get out to minimize risk. We will see this market cap go back down into the $800 billion range. We will see Bitcoin get between the ten dollars to $14,000. When does it happen? I'm not sure, folks. Does it happen? I'm pretty confident that it will. Not financial advice. As I said, Michael thinks that the, big, the bottom's in. I don't. It's like flipping a coin. Someone even, Someone's even going to say, yes, it's in, or no, it's not. That's the only way around this. Now, Hugo Philia put out a long thread. We're going to read all of it. Because I understand that people are frustrated about the delay in the distribution. 
I am equally, if not more, frustrated. There are so many useful things that myself and the team could be doing other than than lazing with exchanges at this point. We have been working to coordinate the distribution with exchanges since late May. There are two things on this that you need to know. One, there is high variable in how exchanges operate, operate with respect to projects. Some exchanges provide a streamlined and information-rich process to enable projects to understand the matter that they do things. Others do broadly the opposite. This makes it hard for a team and a project to plan around that. Number two, a distribution of this magnitude doesn't fit the standard way that exchanges operate. Exchanges are used to operating on their own timetable, and we are asking them to work with us in a coordinated manner to benefit of, for the benefit of the community. Naturally, exchanges don't have the same sense of urgency around us as we do. When we announced that we would launch October 24th to November 6th, which is today, it was captivated that it was subject to exchanges discussions currently excluding japanese exchanges which have which own 70 which which have their own process 70 percent of the tokens own exchanges will be distributed shortly after 6 13. getting final confirmation from just three more exchanges will take this figure to over 94 percent i made a decision to push back the distribution for two reasons one if there are months between exchange distributions, then recipients at later di distributing exchanges will be adversely affected by not having the chance to take part in the FTSL participation and governance, or receive the token distribution through the mechanism outlined in the FIP.01 if it goes ahead. Then the much bigger reason, number two. Although unlikely as all exchanges have shown willing, there is a possibility an exchange doesn't distribute for a long time or at all. It needs to be strongly noted. While, while the tokens have not been distributed, Flare working together with the community have leveraged. After token distribution, the leverage disappears completely. Lastly, although I can certainly appreciate that it may not look like it from the outside, the team does uh, has done a tireless job and have been very successful so far in getting 70% that will be distributed quickly. When and if social pressure needs to be applied, please work with us to get the rest of the way there so that Flare can launch and the community can get tokens they deserve. Lastly, January 9th will be the absolute last date for the TDE. Come what we may, we will do distribution by then. If we can do it sooner, we will. I will update with any further news that you have. So, long story short, Flare is supposed to get started today with distribution. Exchanges are holding them up. They think it's only fair to hold it back until they have all these exchanges on the same page. When is the distribution going to happen? We do not know an exact date at this point. But what we do know is that January 9th would be the drop dead deadline. Now, CryptoVinco put SEC only went after Ripple slash XRP to try to take out Bitcoin Ethereum's biggest competition. This is a fact. Little did they know it would backfire and expose just how corrupt, corrupt and politically motivated the SEC is. The Hinman documents will show how shameful these people are. That is 100% fact again. And Jeremy Hogan, remember before I left, what did we find out? We found out that at the six court orders in a year and a half that Ripple finally received those documents. Well, Jeremy Hogan went ahead and made a video on it. I want you to listen to this first segment. Council for Ripple. Quote, over 18 months and six court orders later, we finally have the Hinman docs, internal SEC emails and drafts of his infamous 2018 speech. While they remain confidential for now at the SEC's insistence, I can say that it was well worth the fight to get them, close quote. And I said, thank God for that, because then I could stop thinking about covalent bonds for a while. And I told my daughter, you're on your own. And I got on Twitter, and then I saw this from the Ripple CEO himself. Quote, the SEC wants you to think that it cares about disclosure, transparency, and clarity. Don't believe them. When the truth eventually comes out, the shamefulness of their behavior here will shock you. Close quote. Wow, Garlinghouse had the chance to throw a punch, and he sure did. Can't blame him. I mean, the SEC had been throwing free punches at him for two years now. So yes, the Hinman emails were actually given to Ripple, but what exactly is in them? Well, some parts make it into Ripple's reply, reply brief, so we do have some ideas. Looking at the bottom of page 48 of Ripple's brief, quote, contemporaneous SEC communications suggest that the SEC's own officials were well aware that the speech would lead to redacted and deliberately recommended giving industry participants redacted presumably to give the agency more room to maneuver, close quote. So at least there we can infer that the first part says SEC officials were well aware that the speech would lead to 
confusion or something like that in the marketplace, even if we can't infer the second word. But put the guessing game aside for now and let's see what we know about the secretive emails for sure. First, we know the SEC fought tooth and nail not to produce them and now they have. But we also know that the emails are under seal, so the public won't probably get to see them until December at the earliest. We also know that the emails are only really relevant to the fair notice defense and not to the issue of whether XRP is a security or not. We know that the SEC wants the judge to rule in its favor on the fair notice defense. And now we also and finally know that Ripple wants a jury trial on its fair notice defense, not the judge to decide it and summary judgment. And how do we know that? Let's look at Ripple's recent brief on page 43. Quote Roman numeral three, defendant's fair notice presents genuine disputed issues of material fact for trial. In seeking summary judgment on defendant's affirmative fair notice defense, the SEC ignores overwhelming evidence showing that no reasonable person trying to apply the Howey test would have believed that defendant's offers and sales of XRP, most of which involve no contract at all, were investment contracts and thus securities, close quote. Yes, Ripple is saying, we'll see you in court on the fair notice defense SEC. We want to run a bunch of SEC employees and prior employees, including Mr. Hinman, up on the stand and cross examine them in a public forum on the guidance or lack thereof provided by the SEC. And we want to ask them on the stand why the SEC director of enforcement declared Ethereum a non-security knowing that it would cause all sorts of confusion in the marketplace and even having been warned about it by other attorneys at the SEC. Why? Folks, that is huge right there. Let it get to the jury. Let Ripple call up all of these SEC former, current employees. Get them up there. Get him and up there. And we want to know. Let the world know, SEC, why you did what you did. Let everyone see the corruption behind what you were doing. Folks, this is a very big deal what is going on here. I want to show you more from this, but to keep this video short, we're going to leave it right there. I'm going to touch on the attorney Deaton and his Q-like conspiracies in the next video. Plus, I think you're going to want to listen to the next video. We're going to talk about the IMF and possible takeover of the XRP Astro. Folks, I'm going to leave it right there. Listen, wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.